All right, guys. It's uh, Saturday morning, October 31st, 7 a.m. It is 28 degrees out. <laughs> so, in reference to a couple of snowmobiles, I want to make sure that they're starting without problems. Try and get a little ahead of myself here. Got my cup of coffee. I'm all bundled up. Let's see what we can do. Look at that. <laughs> it's still dark out. Look at the moon. What? Frost everywhere. So the 700. Look at the seat. Are you serious? Uh, all right. So I didn't have a problem starting it last night after I put some BR9 EYAs in. So my neighbors aren't gonna be happy, but oh well. I mean, I gotta do what I gotta do. It's not gonna take that long. So, I'll set you guys down and I'll see what we can come up with. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and start this one. Should start fine. And then uh, the other one I'm gonna start is the 99 Thundercat. People should be getting up at 7 a.m. anyways. That's all I gotta say.
terribly loud. Well, that's good. Last year it seemed like it would take quite a few pulls. And granted, I had 35 pilots in there, but I also had a half degree bigger cutaways and mismatched needle jets. So, that's good. Just idling just above 1500, so I'm happy about that. Seemed a little rough at the beginning, so we're definitely gonna have to keep an eye on it either way. one complete make sure I got both my gloves yeah. now we're gonna go over to the Thundercat I hear a dog barking I'm gonna undo both sides of this because it's gonna get pretty smoky. I got another one of these doors on order from Harbor Freight. I'm gonna end up just putting it on the back. Hold on.
So like I was saying, I got another one of those doors on order because, whoa, almost just killed myself. Tripped over these doggone ski savers. Get those out of the way. Ninety nine ZR six hundred part sled. I don't know, maybe a project sled. Got it for two hundred. All right, so continuing on. So I got these blue stick on zippers, and then you just cut a hole, you, know, you cut a strip, you unzip it, they cut a cut in between. Well, they didn't stick very well. They did for like the first year. Then I tried re-gluing them, and that didn't work very well. I mean, I paid like 15 bucks for them, what do I care? It served its purpose for a little while, but yeah, come to find out, guy down the street looks like he's got this same tent and uh, tarp in his back uh, carport in his backyard. And he's got two doors on it. So that got me thinking. Why don't I call Harbor Freight and see if I can get a replacement door? Because it's the same thing, front and back, same panel. Sure enough, they did. 18 bucks. <laughs> So that is the plan. Stan. Um, may as well try the 440. I'm going to go ahead and start the EXT up again first. Just to make sure that it's bad. It's good. This one's got electric start. Should've waited till it was high RPMs though. I believe. 
but then I got the fire cap, mount cat handles on there, handlebars, and then I got CRT skids on the front. Other than that, yeah, it's just pretty much stock. She just hums along on the trails, man. Holy crap. It's not really even a breeze either. Could fire up the leaf blower. <laughs> oh, that'd really make everybody's morning, wouldn't it? Gotta do what you gotta do though, right? Cause I sure as heck ain't gonna, ah, it's moving. It's getting clear. Should be good. It's not really helping, is it? Kinda. All right, let's give uh, the old ZL a go. Hopefully my light stays on long enough. This one can be a little booger, that's for sure. All right, so what I do on cold, you know, colder mornings, obviously this isn't that cold comparatively. I'll just act like I'm going to start up, and then I keep the uh, the emergency stop off. Let me make sure the fuel. I don't know if this one's got a fuel valve. I can't remember. Okay, fuel valves on. This one's pretty clean too, though. I mean, it's really clean. There's still yellow zinc on a lot of the bolts. Most of the bolts, actually. It's a 98. So, and then what I do is I pull it over a few times. And then, uh, then I'll turn the emergency stop. Pull that. And then usually it will start. But this one's... This one just seems like it's kind of boggy. Chokes all the way on. Let's see what happens. Fuel doesn't smell the greatest either. Yeah, what you can do is if you lost siphon, you just blow in there as hard as you can and then hold it and it'll pressurize the tank and push fuel up into the carbs. And if you rebuild your carbs, make sure you fill them with premix before you while you're reassembling them. Don't reassemble them dry. Just 
needed a few extra poles. This one engaged at like 2,500, I think. Could be the gas though. Yeah, well, that's her. Whew. Give it a minute to air out. my breath right there it's cold I love it other people are so like oh I can't stand the cold and it's like well you're not gonna be cold if you bundle up properly for one but for two a lot of people just don't have you know they have this mindset that it's like winter time it's time to stay in and it's like, no, it's winter time. It's time to get the sleds out. <laughs> Everybody knows that. <laughs> At least all us that are into sledding do. Like, I didn't really, I'll be honest, like four years ago, I thought about it, you know, off and on, but it never really hit me to go out and actively try and seek a snowmobile. Sounds like there's something over. So, I'm not sure if I told you guys this story, but when I got my first snowmobile, I was trying to get rid of a 55-inch Toshiba television. It was an LED TV, 1080p, had 3D, um, 120 hertz processing, and because we ended up getting a new TV. So, I had that, and... An Xbox, an extra Xbox 360 that I wasn't using had, um, I had two or four controllers with it. It was at least two. I had four or five games. There was a bunch of stuff on the hard drive. And then I had one of those Roku boxes. And it was a Roku, um, I think it was an ES or something like that. I got it at Walmart for like 40 bucks. But it essentially turns your TV into a smart TV. I had boxes for everything. Um, instruction manuals, like literally I still had the box for my TV, remote, pedestal, everything that came with it, instructions. I even still had like that foam wrap that goes around it. So I tried to sell it. I had it up listed for 
like 1100 for, I don't know, like the whole situation, like the Xbox, the TV, and the Roku for like four or five months. I didn't get any bites on it. So I lowered it to 900, had a couple people ask about it, and then I put it on Facebook. Well, I put it on Facebook, and I had it, I ended up going down to like 599, you know, 600 or whatever. People were asking me if they would, if I would consider 250 for it. I was like, I don't think so. No, sorry. <laughs> so I started thinking, what can I trade this thing for? There's got to be something I can trade this thing for that I can get some value out of. And so I started looking and looking and looking, and I was like, ATVs, you know. And then I was like, wait a minute, what about a snowmobile? Because winter was coming up. It was like, gosh, what was it? Actually, no, it was like winter. It was in, we were, it was like December or January, I think, January. And um, so I ended up making this, I typed up this generic message that said, hey, I saw your listing and um, I'm interested, but I was wanting to know if you'd be willing to trade it for this. And then I typed out everything that I had to offer and you know, told them the value and stuff. And I just sent it to like 40 different people. No lie. 30, 40 people at least. It just different stuff. ATVs, um, dirt bikes. I think I only did maybe a dirt bike or two. And then, uh, I sent it to a couple people with snowmobiles and there's this one guy, he was asking $800 for a 96 Arctic cat 580 EFI. And uh, ZR580 if I, and it looked a little beat up. The the seat cover was torn on it, and it had the old school graphics, and it was kind of faded. There's a couple parts of them missing a little bit, but overall shape. And uh, the guy responded back like the same day, <clears throat> and then that night, he said the clutch was slipping. That's the only thing wrong with it. Him and four of his buddies came from like 45 minutes away with a pickup truck, dropped the sled off and took everything and traded it and i rode it around the backyard and i rode it around and it it stopped fine everything seemed to be fine on it you know it started up warmed up and i was happy with that so the guys left and come to find out the only thing wrong with it it seemed a little slow like boggy but the only thing wrong with it was that the clutch was taken apart the secondary the driven clutch people call it the secondary um it was taken apart and when they put it back together they didn't they just put the spring on and then aligned the the three holes on the cover the spring cover well you got to twist it to where the buttons are resting on the helix <laughs> the torque bracket they didn't do that so i but i didn't know any better so long story short i ended up having i contacted uh some people on arctic chat this is before i was like big on facebook or like d digging into facebook more and um so i had it for a while and then i deleted my account and then i started another one so i contact this one guy who's in canada and i sent him a bunch of pictures and he's like i don't think that clutch is set up right and he goes i don't think it's put back together right so sure enough took it off put it back together thing was a rocket i mean for me you know so i was just stoked I couldn't believe that, you know, I was able to get that slug because he was asking 800 and that was more than you know, people were willing to offer for the setup that I had. So that's my story, folks. And I'm sticking to it. So, all right, here's the 99 Thundercat. Orange. It's funny because it, it you can see like reflective light and it looks shiny, but it's not. It's the worst paint job ever. It's so like gritty really chunky chunky is how i refer to it okay let's try and get this started before me battery dies from all the light this one's got a new seat cover coming too so don't fret i got big plans for this one aesthetically Gosh, looking at that light, I'm blind now. Which key is it? There it is. There she goes. Okay, let's see. Make sure the fuel's on.
said. I push keys on, but I push in the uh, thing. Let's just go ahead and give this one a look. Yeah, so I'll just fill my lungs up, blow in there as hard as I can, and then pinch my lips off and then hold it, and it pressurizes the tank and pushes fuel up. All right, so choke's on. I keep my emergency switch off, key on, and then I pull a little a few times. Oh my gosh, dude. Totally different than a 440. <laughs> It comes with round slide carbs. Well, she's got flat slides. Thanks a lot, Mike Miller. And I also got Boyas and Dual Stage Reeds in there. It's a clean sled. Funny, because it was a little stiff pulling it over, but every pull you could feel it got a tiny bit looser. And then, like right before it's the pull before the pull that made it start, it got pretty loose. And then that next pull was bang. Wow. So that is good news, man. That means I set this sucker up properly. And here's a 2000 CRT 600, but I robbed the coil off of this one and put it on the, the Arctic Cat because that's, I was just testing it, that's what it needed, so I left it on there. So I'll be getting a coil for this one. And I had to take the clutch off this and put it on my, eight, my ZR800 last year because the clutch that I was that I purchased that was supposedly new and blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I torqued the bolt down properly for the drive clutch that I got. Well, it popped off 10 miles onto the, in, in, into the trails and scuffed up my um, my driven clutch on my 800. So I was in a brush and I took this one and used that. bump the RPMs up on the idle a little bit get it up to like 1750 but yeah with the with the flat slide carbs on there the throttle is so much lighter I swear I'm gonna convert all my sleds to that especially for my wife because that will you know she'll uh, I think she'd appreciate that more because you know she drives she was driving that um, that ZR800, or ZR600, that's got a 580 in it, 96 580. And although, you know, those springs aren't too bad, you know, they're pretty good, but she was complaining about it. I mean, she's, you know, 105 pounds, you know, so I understand. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that would definitely benefit her. And uh, 
it's just nicer all around, man. They use less fuel because they atomize fuel better and everything. So. Well, looks like I uh, have to do something about the lights. Let's see if I got brights. Whoa, what do we got going on here? Hey, I can turn my dash lights on and off. That's hilarious. So, what? Look at the, something's hooked up wrong. It shuts the tack off. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. That's hilarious. The taillight works, so. Okay, I'm guessing there's a short, but yeah, that's something that needs to be addressed. prepared you got everything figured out so that's it so those were the sleds that I wanted to figure out make sure they were running good we are good so all right should be light enough out now so you guys can see me good morning all right so that is a good Saturday morning guys I don't think I'm gonna post this one today. So, I'm a little behind on a lot of my videos. So, I've just been making as much video as I can. And um, that way I can provide as much content for you guys. So, it's fun for me, I, you know. I know you guys like watching this stuff. And uh, you know, it's fun for me to do it. And so I think that sharing that with you guys is the thing that really you know kind of clicks with me and being able to get that interaction and seeing people watch it and uh you know comment and get help from it too you know a lot of stuff i do is you know so people can see what i do and then get motivated to do their own stuff and you know because there's a lot of things i got some stuff coming up too that i've never seen other people do sure they've done it but I've never actually seen people do it. So that's one thing that I want to do on my channel is get stuff up there that, sure, you may have heard people do it and it's been done, but you haven't really seen people do it because there's, you know, you got people that are, um, they're audible learners, so they can hear stuff and just understand it or they can read and understand it. But then you have visual people that learn easier, which is a lot of people that learn easier by seeing stuff done. And so that's the kind of thing that I want to do here on my channel. So I thank you guys for following along. And, you know, I hope you guys get the satisfaction out of watching videos and watching me do stuff that I do. So, but like I said, if you guys aren't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the alert bell. Share with friends and family and social media. Comment. Just drop in and say hi. You know, if you, or if you got a question, let me know. Shoot me a question. Uh, if I don't have the answer, I'll find the I'll try and find the answer as best I can. If I can't find it, I'll let you know. Um... But yeah, you know, like I said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to get stuff up. So, <clears throat> hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next video. So, make sure that you come on back. All right? God bless you guys.